Hey, what's up guys? My name's Troy and this is my 2006 Mitsubishi Evo 9. So I got into cars pretty much probably like any other person, you know, started out as Hot Wheels as a kid. From there, you know, you get your driver's license. Fast and the Furious movies started coming out. Got into the Mitsubishi Eclipses through that. Evo was next step. The rest is history, I guess. I mean, there's days where I like think to myself, like, how did I really get into this? I don't know. So my first car was actually a 97 Mitsubishi Eclipse GS. It was the non-turbo. Uh, I was at, went to a uh, car show swap meet and uh, it was on the side of the street for sale. I was 14 years old and uh, took pictures, talked to my mom and dad. Dad wasn't having it. My mom's like, well, it's a five speed. You're gonna have to learn. So uh, she was on board with it and, uh, you know, went into my savings, pulled out some cash. And a couple weeks later, we uh, called the guy and went test drove it and uh, picked it up. Yeah, so when I was 14, um, obviously I couldn't drive at the time. So to keep it like running in good shape, my mom actually drove it for about a year, year and a half until I got my temps. And then once I got my temps, it was all mine. And then uh, 16, it was all mine. She couldn't drive it anymore. So, but she uh, kept it in one piece, so thank you. So uh, some of my first mods for the, for the first car that I had, it was a set of wheels. Some of my friends had a set of wheel on his black Eclipse at the time and he was selling them. So I picked them up. I just did like, I did like, I remember it was like, you know, Fast and the Furious age. I did like neon lights under the dash. I thought that was super cool at night cruising with them. And I uh, just did like window tint and like a cold air intake and a cat back exhaust. I'm like, we're like high school kids. We don't have all the money in the world. My friend at the time, he had a 02 Lancer OZ Rally, you know, so it's like, the Lancer, but you know, everyone at, at high school, they always thought it was an Evo. Nobody knew the difference. He went, bought an Evo wing for it, put it on, and me and him, we just, you know, car meets and shows and stuff, and we would always take it up north to like this red granite quarry and go swimming and stuff. And I remember everyone in the parking lot was always just like, oh my God, look at those cars. And we were just high schoolers. We thought we were like the coolest. And now looking back, we were like, well, we were just first cars, but. We were enjoying them for what they were, so. I don't know where I was driving to, but uh, I actually ended up losing so much oil, it started rod knocking, and I ended up driving it home, like 30 minutes home, made it home, and then uh, a lot of people were parting out DSMs at the time, so I figured that's probably my best case scenario to get the most money back. Uh, so I just parted it out, sold everything off of it, and I kept tabs of every single part I sold off of it, down to the dollar. And I parted it out, I think everything all out together was about like $3,000. Shortly after uh, parting out the Silver Eclipse, I picked up a Red Eclipse. It was, it was non-running. Uh, the guy actually um, hydroplaned off the road and put it in the ditch and like the whole front engine bay up to the doors was underwater and you could see like a water line. And I bought it specifically to part out, like that was the goal and everything. And then actually got it home and uh, sprayed, just took out the intake, dumped it out. It was all full of water, dumped it out. Ended up getting it running, ended up driving that one for about like a year, year and a half. And then uh, parted that one out, because I, like I said, I initially bought that one because I knew how much I could make parting it out. So I parted out the red one. I had a 2009 Lancer GTS. I was starting to go to college, so I wanted something more like reliable, more daily friendly and then actually got into an accident with that. And then after that, a 97 GST popped up. So I picked that up and I did a 20G fuel upgrades, fuel pump, um, basically all the supporting mods. I didn't do any engine work or whatever, but I took it to boost in and it put down 400 to the wheels. It was external gate dump. It was obnoxious, front wheel drive, spinning first, second, third. Living up in the Midwest in Wisconsin, every, all the cars are just rusted out and you know, it had the famous like strut tower rust and just frame rust. And it got to the point where I couldn't even jack the car up anymore because the jack was busting through the frame. So I ended up selling that and then took a few years off, just had random daily drivers here and there. I had like a Honda Civic and an Accord, a Cavalier, a few other cars, nothing, nothing too exciting. And then it just, the next step obviously from like the Eclipse was like the Evo. I remember I was doing a project in high school 
and uh, we had to take a bunch of like magazine clippings and we had to do some project. I forgot exactly what the project was on, but I was doing it on like an automotive theme thing. And I was flipping through a Motor Trend magazine and it was like a 2006 issue when the Evo 9 was brand new. And uh, it was the electric blue in the magazine. And I remember I like read the whole article and I was like, someday I'm gonna own one of those. And I remember I looked around, I was like so nervous in the school library and I ripped the pages out, put them in my notebook and left. And uh, ever since that day, I had them hanging up in my bedroom and I would periodically read the article again. So I was looking on and off periodically, about three years on and off, I'd look on, you know, Craigslist, Facebook. There was one in Denver, it was a Evo 8 electric blue that I wanted to look at and I put online if anybody had heard, because it was a dealership selling it at the time. And everyone's like, that dealership's notorious for just selling, you know, picking up flooded cars or just trash cars and just flipping them and trying to make a quick buck. Uh, so I, had, I had decided to skip out on that one. And then one day, right before going to work, uh, this one popped up on my Facebook news feed. It was down in South Carolina. And like right before I got into work, I like messaged the guy and I was like, told him where I was from. Like, I'm serious, like I've been looking for this. And I asked him, I was like, can you send me pictures, videos? And during work, I got probably close to like 100 some pictures, like every panel, underneath, probably three, four videos, cold starts running, shifting through the gears, underneath the car. It was everything I wanted. And uh, we talked back and forth, and uh, we came up kind of with like a price. And then I said, I'll drive down, and if it's everything that I think it is, what the pictures show and what you're telling me, I said, I will pick it up and buy it. And that was one way, it was a 16 hour drive, about a thousand miles to go down to South Carolina and pick it up. And uh, needless to say, brought it home. So now like a lot of people, whenever they see me online, they refer to this car as like the 50 state Evo. Um, as like a kid growing up, uh, we would always go on vacations as a kid. You know, we'd go out east and just, we'd always go somewhere different on vacation. And I guess growing up that just like stuck with me. And then once I got older and stuff, I'd always take like my daily on, you know, trips like national parks, state parks, go hiking, just see like this country, you know. And there were so many times where I'd be in my SUV and I'm like, oh, I wish I had the Evo for like a cool photo opportunity or there's a nice scenic drive. And then it just got to the point where I had like the next trip lined up and I knew it was gonna be epic. And I'm just like, I have to take the Evo. I have to take the Evo. And then it got to the point where I was like looking at a map and I'm like, why don't I try and do all 50 states? Like, is that possible, you know? Cause Gears and Gasoline right at that same time did their trip to Alaska and their whole video just like, they inspired me. I just randomly posted one day, I was like, what if I do all 50 states? And then people were like all for it and they thought it was a cool idea. So went online, I found that map decal and uh, bought some stars and we've been marking them off ever since. I've been doing trips currently at 33 out of 50 states. And then to finish up the rest of them, I'm thinking, you know, cause I kind of like to do a bunch of states kind of like in a, in a group, you know, wherever they're located. So like the Northeast would be a trip, Alaska would be a trip, like the Pacific Northwest would be a trip. So I'm thinking I got probably five, six more trips to kind of complete them all. But there are definitely other spots in all the states I've been to before that I definitely want to go back. Definitely want to go back to California, Florida. And then with Hawaii, people are like, how are you doing Hawaii? And it's like, well, how do you think they get, you know, stuff to Hawaii? They got big barge ships you know, big, get a big enclosed container, ship the car over. It's gonna be very time consuming for planning and it's gonna be more costly, I guess. But I already said I'm in it for 50 states. So I made up the hashtag all 50 in an Evo. So gotta go through with it now and I'm pretty excited about it. Just the whole map in general, like, the conversations it's brought up, like I'll be at a gas station, you know, just locally around where I live, like conversations all the time. And even if, 
it doesn't bring up a conversation like there's always people looking at it and I think that's just to bring people together and like talk about some common stuff because there's a lot of people that come up to me and they love traveling they don't even know what an evo is but they just think the whole 50 state idea is awesome and then i tell them like yeah the majority of people that own these you know the majority of them they build them they're not the most reliable some people only drive it a couple hundred thousand miles a year and i put 10 maybe close to 15,000 miles on in a year. So I think that's pretty inspiring for some people to think like, you know, if you do, you know, keep up on your maintenance, you know, love your car and stuff that it is possible and you can do it in whatever car. And there's definitely been some people that have messaged me for tips, like what do I do in certain situations? And I, I love just the conversation and, and it's like, go for it, man. Like see the country, it's beautiful. So I just, you know, I hope me doing this inspires some people to get out there, even if you don't have, you know, the money to go across country, check out your own state, you know, cause there's probably plenty of things to do in your own state that you don't even know exist. Just best thing I do, go on Google, things to do, top things to do in your state. I get asked too about the Evo is uh, how's like the reliability on road trips because uh, let's face it they're not the most Mitsubishi in general is not the most reliable brand previous owner has receipts since day one all the maintenance records oil changes oil change intervals when I first bought a car I'm like if I'm gonna buy it I'm gonna make sure I get a good a good start I didn't want something that was you know built already not saying built Evos can't be reliable I'm just saying you know, if you do it yourself, then you know what it is. But if you're buying somebody else's project, you're not sure what you're gonna get. I basically have every spare part that I would feel comfortable, I guess, switching out, replacing, if I was on the side of the road. I got cooling hoses, I got spark plugs, coil packs, I got brake pads, serpentine belts. I have, I carry a spare alternator, spare starter, two tire patch kits, some windshield uh, repair kits. I do still have the spare in the car if I need be. And then I will also carry a bunch of tools. I have like a little tool bag that I carry everything that I'll need. And then I will bring, I'll have a jack in the back for like really long trips when I'm going across country. Yeah, so if you wanna, if you wanna do something like this, uh, whether it be an Evo or any car, um, you just gotta have like the want for adventure. And like vehicle wise, just make sure your maintenance Make sure your maintenance is good. You know, check all that. Cause the last thing you wanna do is try to be like enjoying a road trip or a vacation and you gotta deal with some car troubles. Nobody wants that. Can get expensive, you know, might have to change your plans. So plan it all out. I just go on Microsoft Word, make it like a, basically like a list, like day one, day two, plan it all out where I plan on being and then where I plan on staying that night. Sometimes hotels, sometimes campgrounds, sometimes the driver's seat. Cost wise, like with like fuel, cause obviously it's not the most fuel efficient car. Um, when I went out to California and back, and I did a whole, I went up the coast, down the coast. So when I went across the whole country like that and back, I did keep every single receipt and all that stuff. And I believe it was about $2,500 in gas. I did camp, like a lot of the campgrounds I stayed at were like anywhere between 20 and $30. I basically do all these trips solo too, so there's nobody else with me, so I don't really have to, you know, if you're going with like, you know, your boyfriend, girlfriend, or some family members, or even kids, like, you have to obviously take them into consideration and what they're willing to do also. So exterior mods, I got a, a deck replica lip that is paint matched, and then down the sides, I got the Rec Speed carbon fiber side skirt extensions with the Rec Speed uh, rear bumper extensions. And then the rear diffuser is the APR carbon fiber rally armor mud flaps. Uh, it just tries to keep the paint car a little bit nicer on road trips. Uh, and then the wheels are Wedsport TC 105X's 17 by nine and a half plus 32 with some uh, Indy 500 uh, 255 40 17 tires. Uh, suspension is Fortune Auto 500s. Rec Speed Carbon Fiber Rear Vortex Generator. And then I got this like universal kind of gurney flap on there. It's just like a universal one. I think it looks, I think it looks kind of cool. The whole car's got upgraded uh, lighting. It's got LED low beams, high beams. It's got LEDs reverse lights, which help backing up at night. 
and then it's also got LED uh, taillights. And then interior, uh, I got a AMS carbon fiber uh, shift knob and then a carbon fiber overlay on the center console and the speedometer, all rec speed. And then I just got an Alpine double din with upgraded speakers all around. So then engine performance upgrades, uh, the whole motor is basically stock. Uh, it's, never been, it's never been taken apart. Uh, I just got powder coated uh, valve cover. It's got a parent intake with a filter, four and a half inch filter. And it's just got a full turbo back exhaust. I'm not 100% sure on the brand. It was on the car when I got it, um, but it's super like tame when you're driving it, but when you get on it, then it's, it really makes some good noise. So I like it for road trips. It's not super loud. Uh, and then I got a three and a half inch ETS front mount intercooler with a tile blow off valve. So if you guys want to find more about me, uh, you can find me at Evolution Adventures. It's evolution.adventures on Instagram and then also on YouTube. Uh, I do videos uh, on some of the trips, not, not all the trips, but definitely do some of them. And then some car meets, I'll do some coverage on it. Thanks for watching. My name's Troy and this is my 2006 Mitsubishi Evo 9. Thanks.